So the first thing we want to look at when we get in the car is our setup behind the wheel. So how we sit and how we fit, basically. So the first thing we're going to look at is our lower body and our ability to hit these pedals. Now the gas pedal is nice, but it's really all about this brake pedal. And we need to be able to hit the brake pedal with as much force as we possibly can to get this car stopped. Now, from the position I'm in right now, it looks like I'm in a pretty good position, and I can certainly hit this brake pedal. But the problem is my leg, my knee, can get straight and locked out. And that's a problem for two reasons. First, that's as hard as I can hit the brake pedal at that point, and that's not good. That means I can't necessarily put enough pressure into the brake pedal to get stopped efficiently and effectively. Secondly, if I was to get into a crash or even just fully engaged the ABS braking system at this point, the pedal's going to come back at me aggressively, and with my knee straight and locked out, there's no give in that system. So something in my ankle, my knee, or my hip area will end up breaking, and that's uh, certainly something we don't want. So I'm gonna move slightly forward, and up here, and now if I hit the brake pedal as hard as I can, my knee stays slightly bent, and that's really important. I can put more force into the brake pedal, and if the pedal comes back at me, my knee just absorbs that force the way it's designed to. Now, the other thing you can do is actually utilize your left leg with a comfortable bend in your knee and your foot sitting nice and flat on what's called the dead pedal down there. With that, you can use that to brace yourself, but it's also a really good judge. Once you're set up properly there, your brake pedal foot will also be set up properly too. So from our base, we move up to our upper body and our, our distance from the steering wheel. There's two main things we want to look at. The first is with my shoulder blades back comfortably, the seat comfortably supporting me, and my arms out, outstretched, I want to drop my hands on top of the wheel. Now, what I ideally want to have happen here is this line across my wrist hit the top of that steering wheel. So what I'm going to actually do is release the steering wheel. It's telescoping and moves up and down and, and back and forth here. And I'm going to pull it actually down and in for me. Good, and my wrist is hitting. Now, I could also pull it out and up, and it would still hit, but this just isn't comfortable for me. So we're going to match up comfort and control here. So let me put that back down. And so now that I'm in this proper seating position for the brake pedal and the pedals, my lower body, and my upper body here with the steering wheel, we're going to look at hand position on the steering wheel. Most people were taught 10 and 2, which used to be right. But in modern day cars, really from the early 90s on up, the car manufacturers have designed the vehicles to have your hands down at 9 and 3 on the wheel. These are called thumb rails. You slide your thumbs right in there, and then you can literally see that all the controls are right at your fingertips. You don't have to take your hand off the wheel more, uh, very often. And you can put a heck of a lot of turn into the wheel. You can basically go 180 degrees in either direction, where if your hands are up at 10 and 2, you can only go about 90 degrees before your hands get jammed up. So it gives you better steering control and more refined control, but it's also for this airbag. Airbags come out between 250 and 300 miles an hour in the majority of cars, and it could be even faster for an older vehicle. So you want to make sure that everything is clear of that airbag. And with your hands up at 10 and 2, if the airbag deploys, well, your hands are going to go back up and towards your face, potentially punching yourself in the face at those high speeds. So you want to keep everything clear of those airbags, and having your hands down at 9 and 3 does that. The airbags are built with large indentations at this hand position, so your hands actually don't come off the wheel if they, if they do come out, if they do explode. And so to have your hands at this position is going to be much safer and a much better idea overall. Now before we get going here, there's one more thing we need to do, which is get this seatbelt on. Now, the majority of people kind of think about seatbelts in the United States anyway as a reactive tool. Right? They're really going to be helpful when you get in a crash. Right, They're going to keep you safe. That's the majority of the way we, we think about them here. But they actually do a heck of a lot more before that. So if I'm driving down the road and there's an emergency and I'm not wearing my seatbelt, I'm going to end up using my hands on the wheel and my lower body to brace myself and hold myself in place, which means I'm no longer really effectively controlling the car. But with this seatbelt on now, what's going to happen Right? My upper body and lower body are held in place. And so now, instead of having to use my hands to keep myself in place, I can use them to really refinely control the car. Small inputs. Whatever I ask for is what I get, and I'm not flying all over the inside of that car, swerving all over the road. So seatbelt's primary purpose allows you to have control over the car, which means fewer crashes. And then if you do get in a crash, they're going to be really helpful there too. <laughs>